There's hardly a discussion in Nigeria these days without the talk of security challenge. From the kidnap of students, attack on the governor of Benue State, or is it the onslaught on correctional facility as well as police headquarters in Imo State? Securing lives and property of Nigerians is our focus on this episode of Special Report. You're welcome. I'm Ini John Mekwa. The latest Global Terrorism Index indicates that Nigeria hangs a red flag as it ranks third amongst world most terrorized countries of the world, with at least 1,606 people killed in 125 fatal incidents. That's an average of 13% incident. Nigeria bounded by other African countries with several security challenges spreading across the continent. I... Since the return of democracy in 1999, governments in power have tried to reduce poverty in Africa's most populated country. Short and mid-term downside risks include security challenges, which are mostly insurgency in the northwestern part of the country, banditry, herdsmen attacks, and cattle rustling. There are also communal clashes and kidnapping in the northwest, piracy and continued kidnapping in the south-south, Pockets of regional groups calling for vulcanization of the country got across the south and the eastern region. The spate and sustained attacks launched by Boko Haram insurgents in the north has been an issue of concern to the present-day government. Continuous efforts have been made and it's still work in progress to find a lasting solution to tackling insecurity. The government has uh, more than ever demonstrated its concern for the issue of the security nation. There is need for our traditional rulers and our religious leaders to continue to encourage interfaith, interethnic marriages as enshrined in uh, Article 15, Section 3, Subsection C of the Constitution. And it is act, and uh, we, the, the Ministry of Information and Culture, we have compiling this report so as to make it a council note and share, also share these findings with all stakeholders and also with state government. That, that shows how, how concerned we are about the state of insecurity in the country. Recently, there's been emerging trend of attacks on various security formations in the southeastern states, notably a prevalent attacks on operatives at security checkpoints. The attack on Nigeria Correctional Service warders, where two officials were said to have been attacked and killed while escorting a van conveying inmates back to the correctional facility after court hearing. And then the attack on the all-progressive Grand Alliance frontline governorship aspirant and former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Professor Charles Soludo, whose cold meeting with youth in his hometown was disrupted by gunmen, leading to the death of three police officers and the abduction of the State Commissioner for Public Utilities, Mr. Emeka Ezenwai. He was later freed. So they see, suddenly they see gunmen begin firing gun, shooting gun, so everybody begin run for his or her life. In the process of running, they get two people and one police down. So this kind of a thing, as a person, I see it as, at least I don't know how to put it, but this kind of a thing, government need to, need to put an end to this thing. And it's not addressing to people. The two heroes enter. Later, towards four thirds, then I think they are, they are security. What they do, they are changing of when the blade enter. There one policeman is here, one is on that front, one is in the, in the door. Come outside and know what is going on. Then the lady, one 
when the lady follow them come, thus carried had pulled for trigger. Carried the drop the policeman there. The boy with the red and red drop the other one. One man is here. Carried the policeman away there for that door. Before he run, enter there, go go for there. So I don't know them. I don't know them. Only that the Saludo invited people to come. I guess part of what is well in the theories of the political motivation is that uh, several people, many people feel that um, while the election might be for us to lose if we're on the ballot, and that uh, if we're on the ballot, then many others or the others contestants in whatever party probably have their chances uh, reduced significantly, and therefore that the only way to increase their chance was if Saludo was not on the ballot. But like I said, I'm not believing um, any of those until the result is out. Another alarming security situation is that in Benue State, where the governor, Samuel Lutong, was alleged to have been ambushed by more than a dozen armed men suspected to be Fulani bandits while on an inspection of his farm near Makodi, the state capital. His convoy was alleged to have been trailed from the farm. Exactly, exactly. So come and meet us here. So that whatever they do, you can just join up to get to the On our way back, we started hearing some gunshots. Uh, we discovered people who were dressed in black. And from our experience, it was very clear that these are Fulani militia men, bandits. And I do not want to take things for granted because a few days ago, the media were washed with the communique or the statement from the Fulani uh, uh, Mayor Tiala who met in uh, Yola. Uh, that is where they met in 2006 and decided that they must take Nigeria as their country and every other person living here must be slave. That was why they started infiltrating the entire country. And they came out with a statement. I was uh, alarmed, singling me out as the only person who is creating problems for the entire Fulani race in this country. It was quite disturbing. And uh, behind the scene, I also heard in, that in the meeting, I was targeted for elimination. Uh, this was the information I got. And they would go after me, whether in my home or in my farm or wherever they get me. And this is not the first time. I had intelligence before that these people say they were going to kill my security aid and then capture me alive and give me gradual killing. But like I always say, my life is in the hands of God. It's not in the hands of any Fulani man or anybody whatsoever. And I still remain firm. I will fight for truth, justice, equity, and fairness till when God permits that I should not be here again. Then I can go. The team of investigators were immediately deployed to unravel those behind the attack. This incident that happened is quite unfortunate, but immediately we got the report of the attack. We immediately responded with quick uh, action. Troops came in from Agasha, troops came in from Akodi, troops came in from part, other parts of Guma to come on a rescue mission. When we got here, we were made to understand the enemy had fled into the forest here, and troops went immediately after them. They slept overnight in the, in the forest, burned down some of the hideouts we discovered there. Days after, the spate of coordinated attacks by suspected hoodlums against security forces in the southeast continued. In Imo state, 
unknown gunmen in the wee hours attacked the Nigerian Correctional Service and the police headquarters in Owere, the state capital, freeing 1,844 inmates, after which the hoodlums burned down almost all the vehicles packed within the facility before setting the building ablaze. You can see the extent of the damage so far. You can see our burnt uh, vehicles and uh, the equally affected the building. This uh, unfortunate tragedy can only be condemned by every reasonable mind. And uh, I want to assure our people the intention is to put fear into our people and make them vulnerable. But I can assure you that government working with security agencies will rise to the occasion and get to the end of the matter. I've already commissioned a detailed investigation into this incident with a view to finding out the perpetrators and the masterminds of this ugly incident. Luckily for us, no life was lost. But however, the properties that were destroyed is also unacceptable. So going forward, government will rise to the cushion. And our security agencies are now prepared more than ever to be more proactive and ensure that there will be no repeat of this type of uh, ugly incident. It is not as if we don't know that in the past, hoodlums, armed bandits, have killed so many of our people. But all we are saying is that we need the cooperation of everybody, traditional rulers, citizens and community leaders, to join forces with government and security agencies to ensure that this type of act is condemned outrightly. Both facilities raised at close proximity to the seat of power in the state. A day after, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, arrives the state. He condemns the attack, saying an attack on the nation's security facility is an attack on the safety and well-being of citizens, as well as the way of life of the people. It's very evident that uh, this is not just an attack. When you attack uh, institutions of law and order and law enforcement, it's evident that it's not an attack on just those institutions, it's an attack on the welfare and the well-being of the people, especially when you free uh, prisoners and persons who may be dangerous, dangerous to the community, dangerous to the people. When such a thing happens, it's an attack on the people themselves, which is why this is particularly atrocious and condemnable. As I said you know, earlier, the um, government has already taken steps to enhance uh, security here and in the correctional facility and in the states generally, and that's a continuing uh, process. Uh, Consultations are already going on with the security agencies in the state and the federal security agencies. And I'm sure that um, we, you will see, we will see uh, a much more enhanced um, uh, security arrangement uh, in the state. But, but just to say that this is, is without excuse, whatever the motives of the perpetrators, uh, it is completely, un it is, it is, it's so... It is so egregious, so wrong, you know, so cowardly. I, I, you cannot condemn it enough. I am appealing to all escaped inmates to voluntarily return to custody. Those who read this call will be given amnesty on the possible consequences of escaping from lawful custody. Those who return on their own will be given amnesty. They will not be tried for escaping from lawful custody. Those who return on their own. I urge all correctional officers to be vigilant and take the security of the facilities and the inmates seriously. More than ever before, we are all at war with an enemy that you may not yet know, but knows you inside out.
in a bid to finding lasting solutions to the challenge that has ravaged the six geopolitical regions of Nigeria, this conference called at the instance of a non-governmental initiative conceptualized in response to emerging threats in the nation. Our members of the Peace Committee, retired generals and air vice marshal. The National Peace Committee carefully chose participants which cut across all walks of life to speak on emerging threats of insecurity and challenges faced at tackling them. At times of national tension like this, the more the voices, the better it is for everyone. The now famous saying by Edmund Burke holds true, and I quote, all that is necessary for civil to triumph is for good people to do nothing, unquote. It became necessary for us in the National Peace Committee, the NPC, to try and do something because of the state we find ourselves as a country. Our current situation has no precedent and it transcends the boundaries of political, religious, or regional affiliations. It is a most difficult time for our nation and there is no debate about this at all. All voices of reason must rally, must rally together before it is too late. The members of the NPC have received calls by well-meaning Nigerians within and outside the country, as well as from our international friends urging the NPC to wade in and try to douse the tension and find a way out of the current situation. The two major religions all preached to us, ordered us to be our brother's keeper. So let's look at this and don't allow the elites because the elites are few in number, but they are very, very vocal. They are the ones shouting, you want to break Nigeria, you want to break Nigeria. But the common man doesn't even notice Nigeria. He wants to eat one single meal a day, and, and that's all. That's all what he needs. But you employ people, give them drugs, and then with few naira in their pockets, you find them burning people's homes and killing people and things like that. That is not politics. Other contributors made submission that the entire security architecture needs total overhaul to surmount the present state of insecurity. Total strategy has to be developed. Uh, I wasn't here, as I said, in the morning when the uh, service chiefs were here. But I do not think that an issue like the Boko Haram issue, which is now taking us to between 11 to 12 years, is beyond what Nigeria can defeat within the minimum period of time. So something must have gone wrong somewhere. The strategy for all sorts of conflicts are clearly defined. We've got officers trained in these areas but then the correct final decision must be taken if you have to come out of this Boko Haram thing. I do not think it is beyond us. It's not. Equipment or no equipment, it really doesn't come up. If you remember our civil disturbances that we had, what sort of equipment were we using? In Makadi, we are using the DC-3. For those of you who know the DC-3, if you don't know it, well, <laughs> it was an arcade aircraft. But that's what we used. And that's what uh, the Amari people, or the, what you call them, uh, uh, Amoras, use, load their aircraft, and then they use that. So today we have got more sophisticated weapons, 
And I think if we sit down and put our heads together, we should be able to come up with a solution on this. Boko Haram issue or no Boko Haram issue has taken too long, too long a story for this country. We must get out of it as quickly as we can. The chief executive officer of Dangote Group, Mr. Aliko Dangote, agrees that governance should be all encompassing and a responsibility for all. Security is our jobs, everybody, right from security man at your gate to the boss himself. We need to be reporting any suspicious, uh, you know, activities. Uh, one thing that I can assure you of is that this committee, being led by our chairman, will do its best to make sure that we escalate this, uh, you know, uh, your suggestions to the highest authority. Uh, the business community also, you know, they are trying to see, okay, fine, what can they contribute? So it is a collective responsibility. If you want to be safe, then you have to actually contribute your own quota to be safe. I mean, it doesn't come that cheap. I mean, there's no way for us to continue uh, with this sort of thing while we are underfunding the uh, police, we are underfunding the military. You are also asking them to go and recruit. So when they recruit, where are they going to find the money to pay? Because nobody will work. I mean, you can see that we've been fighting about this minimum wage, this or that. So I think we need to really come down and get together to see how do we make sure that this our country works. His Royal Majesty King Alfred Papraye Diete Spiff proposes earning capacity and status for traditional institution to break off communal insurgency. He's asking government to create a water security forces to fight piracy, particularly in the South-South region. We need to really look at the police carefully and that all brings us back again to state police local government police and following what takes in the uh, uh, presidential system. It is very important. Also, we, all the things being mentioned, I was listening, nobody has mentioned sea piracy. There's a lot of sea piracy going on in the, um, along our coast, very seriously. So um, we need to have the Navy going out there to do their patrol instead of staying in shore. The insurance should be left for a coast guard. We have a road safety corps. Where is the waterway safety corps? We have so much waterway, very viable waterways. We should create a waterway safety corps. Even if just an eye on the river, it's, they're not taking anybody's job. But the Navy also should go deep sea and, um, and stay deep sea while the Coast Guard should be created to um, do what they are trying to do now. Um, as I said again, or you, or the main question is how do the, the traditional rulers, we um, are ready to work, but you, they will need to be uh, funded also. Better supported border security, among other already spelt out solutions, are the way out. The federal government must collaborate with state governments to address the immediate challenge of border porosity. Concerted efforts to recruit, train and post adequately equipped customs and immigration personnel to the region can boost surveillance and stem the tide of the free flow of arms into the country. Moreover, addressing corruption here is pivotal because border patrol is a major racket for security forces and government officials. The ongoing military response must also be sustained through strategic coordination with the counter-terrorism unit. While the recent introduction of drone surveillance and anti-banditry bombardment is maintained. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget you can always share your thoughts and questions with us. We are always happy to hear from you. I'm Ini John Mekwa.